Hey, friend, Chris Vandeviver here from whylogicprorules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Now, this week I was planning on sort of distancing the channel from the 10.5 update. We've talked about it a lot. There's a lot of videos revolving around it. Felt like a good time to just start moving on. But over the last several weeks, I've received a lot of emails from different readers who are asking a lot of questions. Basically, what are the do's and don'ts when it comes to updating logic? Many of these folks are pretty cautious. They're pretty nervous about updating their systems. And I think that is exactly how we should be when we're jumping into an update. And in fact, Apple even has in its own documentation around Logic Pro 10 recommended steps for backing up logic and backing up your Mac system. Although we like to believe that software is just perfect out of the gate and there should be no bugs ever, that's just not reality. Every piece of software has a bug or two. We're all gonna experience it at some point. And even though the updates to Logic are magnificent, if you go about updating Logic and then updating your OS, you could potentially run into some problems that could be crippling to your projects or just, you know, just a bother enough that you're like, man, I wish that I hadn't done this. So I thought this was a great opportunity to cover these steps, these do's and don'ts, and cover these questions that people have asked that you could just bookmark and refer to throughout the future. Just every time Logic has an update, you could refer to this video, the links that I'll include down below, just so it's all in one handy place. So let's dig into the do's and don'ts of updating Logic Pro 10. Number one, the very first thing that you should keep in mind forever and ever, anytime there's an update, is don't update when you're in the middle of an important project. Absolutely refrain from updating, as alluring as the new updates might be. And for me, I update every time Logic updates. But if I were in the middle of a project for mixing or mastering or anything else, I would hold off. So if you're working with clients where you're mixing, mastering, maybe specking out some audio to visuals, or if you have your own Logic project, an album maybe that you're almost done with, this is going to be your perfect album and you're so pumped to be done with it, but you're not quite there yet, just hold off on the update. Just read about it on forums, on news sites, just wait. Because if you go through the whole process of updating Logic, updating your operating system, you may bump into some bugs or some hiccups that could end up making your life much harder as a result. If we wait until our most important projects are completed, then you have an open space to update and it's not gonna be of huge detriment. Again, we'd like to believe that software is perfect and would be bug free, but that's just not the case. Better to be safe than sorry, which leads us into number two of the do's and don'ts of updating Logic Pro 10. And number two is follow Apple's recommendations for backing up Logic Pro 10 and your system. So down below, I have a number of web pages we're gonna walk through. And again, I'll include the links in the description and in the post for this video. That way you can just bookmark one video and you're all set. But Apple has its own recommended procedures for backing up Logic Pro 10. And you can find this page, if we go back here, in the Logic Pro release notes. All you have to do is Google Logic Pro release notes and these are all the updates and all the bug fixes and everything listed out for every new update. And at the very top here, in the release notes, it says before updating to Logic, make sure to back up the currently installed version of the application and your projects. So you just click this and you can bookmark this page. And these are the steps that Apple recommends for backing up Logic. In a nutshell, all we're going to do is, is we're going to go into the Finder in the Applications folder, Find Logic. We'll create a folder in the Applications folder and we'll call it like Logic Pro 10, whatever version you're backing up. So let's assume it's 10.4.8. And then we go to File in the Finder right in the top here and we find compress Logic Pro 10, and then we compress that version of Logic and put it into the new folder we created. This gives us an out. So when we update the app via the App Store, and if 10.5 is just not working out, you can literally trash 10.5, uncompress your older version of Logic, and you're in the clear. And we'll walk through those steps in just a moment. Apple also recommends backing up your Logic Pro projects, which should just be par for the course. You could use an external hard drive and just copy your different project files to that drive, you could use a cloud-based service like Dropbox or Backblaze, or you could use Time Machine just to back up your entire Mac system to an external drive. Whatever solution you choose, you should absolutely have your Logic projects somewhere other than just your Mac system. In fact, if your projects are only living in one place, that's a recipe for disaster because things happen. I actually had an artist one time coming to the studio to record, and right before they showed up, my hard drive stop connecting with the rest of my Mac system. The hard drive didn't die. The cable that connected the hard drive to the rest of the computer, I don't know, it just went bad. But luckily I used a service like Time Machine 
So I was able to boot up my system from an external drive and just run the session as if nothing had happened. Therefore, you definitely want to have your Logic projects in more than one place. Okay, so let's walk through the steps for backing up Logic Pro 10. I'm going to open the Finder, and I'll navigate to my Applications folder. Let's just drag this out of here. And let's go down to Logic Pro 10. At this point, what we need to do is, is we need to create a new folder within the Finder. So we can go up to the gear here, new folder, and I'm gonna call this LPX 10.5, okay? Because I have 10.5 installed on my system. But you can see here, I also have a version of 10.4.4 backed up as well. But let's assume that Logic Pro 10 has been updated and 10.5 is an older version now. Now all we have to do is right click on Logic Pro 10, we can go down to Compress Logic Pro 10. You can also go to File, go down to Compress Logic Pro 10. And now my Mac is going to compress Logic Pro 10 into a zip file. This could take a bit, so I'm not going to go through the entire process of compressing, but just know, you know, wait it out, let it do its thing. Let's close out of this for now. Okay, even though I close out of the compression process, we have a zip file, so let's just drag it into this folder just to demonstrate. Okay, our version of 10.5 is now backed up and we can now update via the App Store. Let's say we've updated to 10.6 or 0.7 and it's just, it is not working with my system, it is not working out well. At this point, I can trash this version of Logic. Okay, we've now trashed it. And let's open 10.4.4 here. And I'll just double click to uncompress the file. This is gonna take a minute, I'll let it do its thing and then we'll open up Logic Pro 10. Cool, so we've now uncompressed 10.4.4. I'm gonna copy this to the Applications folder. As you can see, we have 10.4.4 that is loading up on our system. This is your way of backtracking to an older version of Logic. All right, so I'm gonna close out of Logic here and let's discuss backing up your Mac system. I'm not going to go through the entire process, but just know that you have Time Machine, which is an application that comes with every Mac system. And this is an easy way to back up your entire Mac system to an external hard drive or just about anywhere. It backs up everything from your applications to your downloads to your desktop, the whole shebang. Unfortunately, Time Machine doesn't allow a lot of customization when it comes to the backing up process. And if you're looking for a little more customization, I highly recommend a product called Carbon Copy Cloner. It's just like Time Machine, but allows you to set parameters for should your backups run on a schedule, it's just really handy. You can even back up just specific folders and not the entire system of your Mac. This is the product that I use for backing up my Mac system. But my recommendation would be to at least go get an external hard drive, maybe about a terabyte. It all depends on your particular needs and how much space you need, but get an external hard drive, use Time Machine just to back up your system, and now you've got your project saved in two spots and not just one. Now, number three, what should you do if an update just isn't working with your Mac system and seems to be breaking things? Or to put another way, you're just experiencing bugs in general. Maybe you didn't update. You've just run into a bug and how do you get through that? Well, as we discussed, if the update of Logic is messing with your system, you trash it and you reopen the backup of your previous Logic version. And just don't overlook this step. If you had to update your operating system to be able to update Logic, because now the latest version of Logic only runs on the two most recent operating systems, in this case, it'd be Mojave and Catalina. In that case, you would have your Time Machine backup or your Carbon Copy Cloner backup, and you would restore your system from that backup. And Apple even has documentation for how to restore from a Time Machine backup. So I'll include that in the links down below. Now let's say that you're experiencing a bug or a problem that you just can't seem to fix. You're not looking to backtrack into an older version of Logic. You're not looking to go back to an older operating system. It's just like something's not working as you would expect it to. And like, what do you do to fix that problem? Well, Apple has documentation called If Logic Pro 10 Isn't Working. And these are specific steps to take to figure out the problem with your particular system. And it starts with very simple suggestions such as restart your Mac system, update Logic Pro 10, Check your device or software compatibility. Use the built-in audio with Logic Pro 10. I'm not gonna walk through all this, but it goes all the way down to either deleting your preferences within Logic, which often can be a huge help, or reinstalling Logic. So deleting your version of Logic and then just re-downloading it from the App Store. Many times I have folks who reach out to me and will say like, Chris, I'm experiencing this problem. How do I deal with it? And it's like, follow these steps. Follow these steps first. If it's not working, then contact. Apple support. You also can submit feedback to the Logic Pro team at Apple, and this is highly recommended. Don't overlook this step. If you're experiencing a bug or if you have a feature request, I'm telling you, don't overlook this, submit it. I can guarantee you that feedback form submissions 
and crash reports. Like if Logic crashes and then asks you like, hey, do you want to submit this crash report? Do you want to send it to Apple? Please do it. Because all of this feedback makes its way across the desk of someone at Apple. I can guarantee it. I've actually received emails from Apple after I've submitted about bugs that I found where they're requesting like, hey, can you send us your project all zipped up? Can you send us some system information? They want that information. The more folks that submit a particular bug report, the more likely it's going to get fixed. The more people who request a specific feature, the more likely you're going to see it pop up in Logic Pro 10. Cool. So these are all the steps that you need to be able to prepare for updating for Logic Pro 10. Let's now move into the frequently asked questions that I've received from readers and subscribers. Number one, can you download only certain elements of an update? In this case, we're talking about 10.5, so can I just download the quick sampler and nothing else? As nice as it would be to just be able to download a specific part of an update, you can't do that. You have to download the entire update. If you want to enjoy quick sampler, step sequencer, anything else, you would have to download the entirety of 10.5, which is exactly why you want to wait till you're done with any important projects and back up Logic Pro 10 in your system. Number two, I hesitate to upgrade the OS for fear that my interface or my software will no longer be compatible, such as plugins, virtual instruments. What should I do? Well, if you have concerns about plugins or hardware compatibility issues, I would personally reach out to the plugin developer, the hardware manufacturer, and ask them point blank, hey, is your audio interface compatible with the latest version of Logic Pro 10 or the latest version of Mac operating systems? Are your plugins compatible with any updates of Logic Pro 10 or OS? If there's a major problem, these companies are going to let us know. I mean, just look at when Catalina was released. Every plugin developer across the board, just about, was like, don't update to Catalina. All of our plugins are not going to work if you do. And it was a major headache for a while, but now a lot of that's been smoothed out. If these companies haven't already made a big statement about a particular update, just reach out to them. They'll tell you. Number three, I have an older Mac and I'm not too sure if I can update to Mojave, which is required for the latest update. Are there any alternatives to updating my Logic Pro 10 version or do I have to get a new Mac? Unfortunately, the minimum requirements for OS when it comes to Logic Pro 10 are exactly that. So we're in 10.5 right now. You have to be able to update to either Mojave at the very minimum or Catalina. I know that's a huge bummer for a lot of folks and I totally empathize, but if you're really desiring the new updates to Logic Pro 10, but your Mac system can't update, to the minimum required OS, then you'll need to buy a new Mac system. Number four, will my songs be erased if I update? Or my plugins, will, will I lose all the work that I've created prior to this update? No, your projects are definitely not gonna disappear if you update Logic. You should be all set in that territory, but sometimes a Logic update can throw a wrench in the gears when it comes to software instruments or plugins. When Catalina was introduced, it changed the game for plugin developers. And so plugin developers had to catch up. And even with the 10.5 update, there's been some hiccups with certain plugin developers. If we take a look over here, we can take a look at Isotope's website and they're a very popular plugin developer. They've created Ozone and Neutron and all these plugins that, that many, many folks use. And it turns out that three of their plugins are not compatible with 10.5 at the moment. Isotope cites that the OpenGL requirements for plugins was updated with the 10.5 update. So these plugins could crash your Logic projects. It appears that also Break Tweaker and Iris 2S also seem to be affected by this update. And so it's up to the developer, in this case, Isotope, to update their plugins to be compatible with 10.5. Native Instruments also lists a couple of plugins that are crashing Logic Pro 10.5 at the moment. And this is a good reason why to be cautious when you're updating Logic Pro 10. While the update in Logic Pro 10 is causing these plugins to crash, it's up to the developers to update the plugins to not crash. If you're one of those folks who's experiencing a crash with a certain plugin, I recommend reaching out to the developer, not necessarily just Apple. And the final question, number five, since I updated my version of Logic to the latest update, now either X, Y, or Z is not working out. It's just, it's not working the way it should. What do I do? In that case, you wanna to go to this document if Logic Pro 10 is not working and work your way down the steps. Sometimes resetting the Logic Pro preferences will fix the problem. Sometimes deleting Logic and then reinstalling it will fix the problem. And if that's not working for you, then you would contact Apple support and submit feedback via the feedback form. Now this was a doozy of a video, but I think it's incredibly important, obviously very timely, and this could be a resource forever and ever because there are going to be updates for as long as we know to Logic Pro 10. So bookmark this video, bookmark the links that I include down below. I'll even include some of the options that I use for backing up my Logic projects and my system. I hope this was helpful for you. If it was, as always, I highly suggest subscribing to the YouTube channel, Why Logic Pro Rules, or subscribing on the website itself, whylogicprorules.com. Every week I'm posting new videos, new emails, and posts to help you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10.
Thanks so much.